Hi everyone! How are you? Welcome to StampinScrapper.com. Um, I'm Joyce Whitman and I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up. I'm so glad you could join me today. Today I'm going to be doing my Christmas card class using the beautiful Evergreen Elegance stamp set. It is such a wonderful, um, fun stamp set that's in the um, annual catalog, the Stamping Up annual catalog, and I actually forgot to grab the punch, let me grab that, that this coordinates with it, see if you guys can see it, um, and this has, this is called the Evergreen Border Punch, and we're actually going to be using it on our first card that I'm going to make tonight. Now I know some of you have already bought my kit for this class, which is fabulous. Thank you, Wendy, for joining. Hi. Um, I'm so glad you could be here. Um, and um, if you didn't get the kit and you watched the cards and you would like the kit, just let me know and I would be happy to create a kit for you and send it to you. Hi, Carla. I'm so glad you could join us. I can't wait to see you at my retreat. Um, speaking of my holiday extravaganza, Carla is going to be joining us at my in-person one, but I'm also going to this year offer it online. How cool is that? It will be October 9th from 9 to 5. You can go on my page here, Stampin' Scrapper, um, on this page and look for it, or go to stampinscrapper.com and you can look up for details for that. Hi, Sandra. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, and you can join us. It's going to be, like I said, October 9th um, from 9 to 5. I will be doing four sessions throughout the day. And we will be creating projects using the cutest Halloween stamp set, a uh, pretty pumpkin, um, the peaceful, peaceful deer, and the adorable penguin place. And you all are going to get a free stamp set too. It's an extra one that we'll be using throughout our projects too. So if you have any questions, just let me know, but I hope you can join us. Well, let's get started with our um, event today. Let me just quick do a couple things here so I can make sure I can see where you guys are talking to me. Um, trying to make sure I can see everything here. Okay, great. Now I'm going to flip you so you might get a little dizzy. So just hold on here while I flip you and add you. Okay, let's flip. Okay, so you should, let's make sure this works. I hope it does. I did it in practice. Okay, so now, there we go. And here are, I think they're all in the screen. They are. This is what we're going to be making today. We are gonna be making these four beautiful cards. Um, my scam scrapper right there. <laughs> I'll move it down in a minute. But we're going to be making these four cards. Like I said, we're using the beautiful Evergreen Elegance stamp set. Well, I know you guys don't want to listen to me, Gap. So let's get creating, shall we? All right. If you have your kit, let me move these. This is the first one we're going to be making today. If you have your kit, you are going to want to get the packet out that has this. This is our packet. I'm gonna put this off to the side so you guys can see this. Let me move this down. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put together um, one of the cards. You Each of your packets have three cards that you can make. Um, yay, I'm glad you guys didn't get too dizzy on that. Thanks, Carla, for letting me know. Um, you are going to be, um, which card? Uh, I lost my train of thought, I apologize. You're going to be have your kit. We'll make three cards. I'm going to make one. I will probably stamp all three of mine at the same time just so I can put them together later, but I will put one together so you can see how to do this. Now, you're going to need, um, oh, I forgot one thing. And everyone that got a kit got this cute little um, uh, goodie. I always make a little treat for all of you. Um, hi, Diana. Um, thank you for joining. Get your kid out. Get ready. Um, what, um, in the summer, it's hard because I mail a lot of my kids for my online classes. So I try not to use chocolate because I got a call from a lady one day and said, I got my kid. Thank you so much. You're, I'm like, oh, yay. She goes, we have a problem, though. I said, why? 
Well, the chocolate fell out of the holder I had it on and it opened up and melted all over her kit. So I had to do another kit for her. So I don't usually send chocolate. So this time I put in the Werther's Original Candy Apple, or yeah, Candy Apple, I think it was, um, caramels. Oh my gosh, they are so good. But um, that's what's in your little kit treat. So everyone got one of those. Okay, so on this card, we're only gonna be using e Evening Evergreen for this one. You're going to need your tall tree, and you're going to need Merry Christmas. And on the inside, you can use, I, um, I will be using the Made the Beauty of the Season. I will be using that a lot. Um, and the cards that we're gonna be making, but I just put this, so I didn't stamp anything in the middle, but you can if you want. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do our stamping first. First thing we're gonna stamp is our Merry Christmas. And we gotta to remember to do our envelopes too because we don't wanna send out naked envelopes. I'm just gonna put some of my stuff off to the side that we don't need right this second. Okay, so I'm just getting the paper out. And as we go along, I'll tell you the sizes of all the paper. Now for your white, I use the beautiful, I forgot to grab that. I use the scallop contour dies for this one, and I use the big one right here. I love these dies, and I will tell you, I bought these dies first, and then I bought the stamp set because I thought, oh, I won't want the stamp set. I just really wanted these. Like, I wasn't concerned about these. I wanted these, and I wanted the scallop, and guess what? I ended up buying the stamp set, so now I just buy them both, but that is what I used for this to cut that out and that piece of paper is was originally four and a quarter by five and a half to cut that out this piece right here is two by three and a half so let's do our merry christmas first we're going to do one at a time and like i said we have three of them but i'm going to show you a little trick if you want to do this with all three of yours okay so i'm going to put one here and i'm going to line these up so they're all even so i'm taking my scallops and i'm lining my scallops up so that way i know they're all even i'm going to do this one too oops that one moved over just a little because you want to make sure they're even because you want to make sure they're all straight okay so if your bottom one's straight that one's going to be straight i need to come up a little bit let's come up to here okay now the reason i'm doing this is because i want to stamp Merry Christmas on all three. Well, I don't wanna stamp it, take it, move it, stamp it. Okay, so this is a little trick I'm gonna show you. So you're gonna take your ink, your stamp, and you're gonna ink it up. And I got a brand new stamp pad, and that's too wet. And you know what I forgot to do? You're gonna hear white, so I apologize, because I forgot to get out my simple chamois, and it's not wet. But I'm going to, this is how you can tell you press too hard. This is a brand new ink pad. So it is very, very wet. So I need to, next time I know, to slow it down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. Because I was playing with it, huff on it. You wanna keep that uh, ink moist and then you're gonna stamp the bottom and I go near the bottom. One, two, three, straight up. So then I'm gonna ink it again. And see, I didn't press as hard, so now I got it. And then we're gonna go ahead and ink this right away too. And we're going to do that on the next one too. So that way then you get all three inked at the same time. And when you do something like this where you're doing three all at the same time, that is called batching. And you're going to see me do that a lot today. Um, when you're working on multiple, um, oh, what you call it, um, cards, this is what you would like you should do because this will make it faster for you to when you do your cards. Okay, so I clean that one off. I'm going to move this off to the side. I'm just going to take it like this, move it off to the side. Now the ink is dry. I just want to make sure. Now let's get out our white. And this time I'm going to line them up like this. Now, that's how a lot of people stamp. I'm weird. I stamp sideways. So I'm going to turn mine like this because like I said I stamp sideways it's just easier for me to make sure that I have things lined up now 
with this tree, especially the tall tree, you want to make sure that you're getting in the middle. So tap, 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 twist, 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 tap, tap, tap. And look and make sure, and see again, I pushed too hard because I'm still getting used to this ink pad. So I'm gonna clean that off because I don't want that on my card. This is where wipes come in very handy. Okay, and then I'm gonna huff it and I'm just gonna center it on here. Voila, there we go. So I'm gonna do it again, tap, 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 twist, 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 tap, tap, tap. That looks good. Again. One, two, three, straight up. Okay. One, two, three, twist, twist, twist. One, two, three. Oh, I will, we're gonna try it. I have a little bit on the edges, but I think I'm gonna be okay. One, two, three, and straight up. There we go. So go ahead and close this. You always want to close your ink pads so that you are not, um, what you call it, putting your project in it. I'm trying to find a place to stick my mouse. <laughs> okay, and I need my wipe to clean this off because again, we don't want to put our things in um, the way. And because I'm using wipe, I'm probably gonna get my hands dirty during this. So you're probably gonna see ink on my hands. Um, Okay, so now let's put together. We're gonna, on your base, we have five and a quarter, half by eight and a half, and you're gonna score at four and a quarter. And one thing you want to do, you want to make sure you do, is you want to, when you fold it, you want your mountain on the inside. You're gonna bring it up, put your finger in the middle, once you get these lined up, take your finger and bring it down, and then go across like this, and then, you, and then you use your bone folder to burnish it. And that is going to get a direct, um, a straight, to make sure it's, your card is straight. So again, we're gonna go up, my lined up, put my finger here, bring it down and across, and then I take my bone folder and get a nice burnish on that. If you want a crisp edge on your card. So we're gonna bring it here. Oh, I'm glad you like my little tricks, Carla, yay. Okay, so now we have those. Now we can bring in our white and we can go ahead and adhere our whites um, to the thing. So what I would do is, I, like I said, I'm only gonna put one card together for you. So what I would do is I would um, go ahead and adhere this and I put tape on all three of them at the same time. Tape up here, I'll do one so you guys can see for my batching, what I mean by batching. I'll do this card. I'll make all three so you guys can see what I do. So I'm gonna go across. Now, if I was making like, oh, say I was making 12 of just this card, I would lay all 12 of these white ones out and I would put tape on them. And then I would go through and put them all on. And you'll see here in a minute how easy it is. So I grab it, I'm gonna move these two out of the way so they don't get, ah, uh, don't stick. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it, put it on. And I'm just putting this one on, just trying to get it centered. I am not holding it. Oh, you know what? This has a little punch out from the edge in there. Okay, and put it down. Grab your next one, put your next one down. See how much faster it is once you get all the tape on it? And you'll see definitely when we do the top part, this part on it, you will see what I mean about how fast it goes because we're gonna be doing lots of layering on this card. So I can bring it down just a little. There we go, that looks good. Okay, so set those aside, we're done with those. So now bring out your layers. Bring out these. Okay, whoops, here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is they're all gonna go on the cherry cobbler. Now we're gonna pop the cherry cobbler, so we're not going to put those, I'm not gonna put tape on those yet, but I wanna put tape on all of these. So I'm gonna flip them like this. I think you guys can see all of them. Okay, so I put laid all of these out 
and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put tape on all of them right now. So you just tape them up. And you don't need a lot of tape. Um, last night at my in-person class, it was so cute. There was this young lady that joined, came with her mom. She was so cute and she did such a good job. I think she was 12, 13, I think she was. And she did, like I said, just a great job. But she went to put the tape on and she was putting so much tape on. I'm like, um, honey, you don't need that much tape on this. And they like to stick to you once in a while. Yeah. Okay, one more to go. Okay, so now we're gonna do our batching, but we're gonna do it backwards because you got tape on the bottom of this. I'm just gonna move this one off to the side. So you're gonna take your um, cherry cobbler, Grab one of your designer series paper, and I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm just gonna move these a little bit. Didn't think that through. Okay, so you're gonna grab, you're gonna line this up, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna line, your three sides are gonna be the same distance, so you can see the same amount of red cherry cobbler on each of the three sides. Put your finger here and drop it, and it's gonna be lined up. I should have gone up a little bit more. I must have cut this one a little bit shorter, but that's okay. Now take your burnt green, do the same thing, line it up, and it's going to be a little bit longer because my piece was a little longer on this one. Okay, and a white. Ah. Don't throw it, and you're going to do the same thing, line up your three sides, and there you go, and press it. So you got one done. Then you go do your next one, designer series paper. green and your tree and what's nice about it is the designer series paper I used is from the tidings of Christmas oh and I didn't tell you the sizes okay so your cherry cobbler is um, two and three eighths by three and seven eighths then you're gonna put on your designer series paper which is two and a quarter by three and three fourths what I was gonna tell you is this design doesn't make a difference because it is goes every which way. So you don't have to make sure it's going the right direction. And then our evening evergreen is two and an eighth by three and five eighths. And our white is going to be two by three and a half. And there you go. Now, if you like this card and want the measurements for this card too, it is on my um, stampinscrapper.com page. Um, you can go there and I put all these measurements. So don't worry about like, writing down these measurements. They are on my blog. Okay, so we're going to pop this. So we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna grab our dimensionals and we're gonna put those on here. I do use a lot of dimensionals. Number one, they're inexpensive. But number two, I just want to make sure that the whole thing is popped. I feel like if I don't put them here, then sometimes you can, you know, if you grab it like this, it goes down and I just don't like it. So I do put quite a bit of dimensionals on my stuff. And then I'm going to show you another trick. Now, I usually use our old paper piercer for this, but I'm going to try it with my... Um, Take your pick, because I don't, like I said, I don't usually use it with this one. But if you go like this, see this is a little bit thicker, but it might work. And you can grab these off. No, this one, I can do it faster with this. But you just pick it up like this, and you can pick up the, um, goodness, that one doesn't want to come off, does it? You can grab your the backing, and it saves so you don't get sticky on your fingers. That is one way you can do it. Um, usually when I'm... I have a I can do it faster with my fingers but if I don't for some reason want to make sure my fingers don't get sticky I use that and then we're gonna go ahead and attach it right here and I want to go up towards the top so it's not centered so I'll go ahead and put that one and like I said I usually do my nails because I can do it faster with my nails 
but I have nails. So if you don't have nails, that works great. So I'm going to take out my other two cards and I'm going to put these on there. And put this one. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to do the inside piece. And this is a four by five and a quarter. Now we're going to put our beautiful trees that we put used our punch here i used the punch for you and cut it out hi bonnie thank you for sharing if any of you other lovely ladies would share that would be wonderful one thing you notice when you open up your kit on this one is if it is going to be bigger than your paper your punched out is because i want you to be able to play with it and put it where you want it and not exact because sometimes i don't get the um it punched just perfectly and I want you guys to be able to adjust it um, now for this you could do it many different ways um, let me grab my silicone craft sheet and what I'm going to do I use liquid glue on this it's just easier for me on this one but you could use adhesive you could actually use glue dots if you want it's whatever you want to use and I'm gonna bring this in and you can put it wherever you want. Now that's another thing I like about the liquid glue because I can move it a little bit. Okay, I'd like, let's move it over a little. See how I can move that with the glue? Okay, I wanna bring this down a little bit. This one needs to come up. There we go, and put it down. Now, I'm gonna set this off to the side. I am not going to cut it yet because with the liquid glue, it takes a couple seconds for it to adhere so I'm going to go ahead and do my next one to make sure that those are adhered good before I cut. Okay. Am I up high enough that you guys can see? Okay, I am. I'll make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. this up a little bit there we go okay so we got that one on and one more now the reason too you do not want to put all the glue on all of these at the same time is because if you use your liquid glue I haven't tried it but I have heard that if you let it sit for a little bit it can become um, less tacky so you can move things better I want to make sure it sticks where I put it so I am going to go ahead and do it one at a time. There we go. And put it across. Okay, so now you're going to want to trim these. Now I have a pair of scissors that I strictly use for cutting with, um, that are not, um, that I use strictly for um, glue, and they're these but I will cut one so you can see I use a different pair, but I will grab my paper snips work wonderful too. And if you get glue on your scissors, you can just use um, alcohol wipes to take that glue right off or goo gone or anything like that. It'll take it right off. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my mess. Alrighty. Done with this. I always try to clean up as I go, and that way you don't have such a big mess when we're done. Okay, so now we're going to do again, we're gonna put tape on the back of this. I ran out of tape. Okay. And you know what? I didn't grab a new one. Let me quick grab a new one. Okay. So your refills come in like this. 
come in the bag, you just easily open it up. I didn't look at that before we started to make sure I had enough tape in there. And Okay, and then you're going to pop that one out and you're going to pop this one right back in. Now, before I put it in, I always look to see right here, sometimes you get a little, um, some um, adhesive there. So I try to take that off before I put a new one in. If I can get it off my finger. Pop that in, pop this in. Whoops, there's some there too. Oh my goodness, it is sticky today. It doesn't want to come off. Ah! Okay. Oh my goodness, it doesn't even want to stick to the bag. It wants to stay on my finger. Oh my goodness, Joyce. I sat it right in the tape. Okay, now we can get going. Let's get a new one going here. And voila, here we go. Okay, so now we're going to open these back up. Get them out of the way. Again, I'm going to do my three sides. Make sure they're the same going around. And then drop it. And there you go. So we're going to do that to all three of our cards. Okay, now to finish the cards off, we're going to use our red rhinestones. Now you want to do everything in odd numbers. So I um, did five on each one. So you're going to put them um, wherever you want. I'm kind of putting them in the same spot where I did it last time. And you know what? I don't have enough on here. Um, where's, oh, here they are. Here's my other ones. I'm like, I knew there was another piece. So you're going to go ahead and put your red rhinestones on here. You will see me using lots of red rhinestones this time. Um, I was looking through my embellishments to look and see which ones to use this time. And I noticed I had a lot of red rhinestones, so that's what we're going to use. Okay, one more. And we need to stamp our, um, oh, what's it? our envelope yet? I forgot to stamp that when I had the stamp out, but we'll get it out again and do that. Mm, this one goes on. Yeah. Come here. And one more. There we go. Okay. And there are your first three cards. Okay, let me go ahead and get out our envelopes because we forgot to stamp those. Now I'm gonna use the same tree because I want it to match what I did on my card. So I'm gonna take out that stamp again. And I'm just gonna put it right here in the corner. So you can still put your um, address label on there, your return address label. And I forgot to twist, so I didn't get my center quite as well as I wanted, but it's okay, it's on an envelope. There we go. And one more. And there you go. And that is your first set of cards. So I hope you like that card. That was fun to create. I did see um, one kind of like this online um, so I kind of changed it the way I wanted to, but I did see one like this online. So you might see another one like this. Okay, so that goes right here. Put these up here. And all of you got a clear envelope when, um, which caught, you got a clear bag. And so what I do is I just take those three cards, stick them back in my bag, and I'm done with those. Okay, so now for our next card. We are going to be getting out this packet because it goes with 
this card. So with this one, you're going to be using the Evening Evergreen and the um, Cherry Cobbler for this one. Hi, Gail. I'm glad you joined us. Oh, I'm glad you liked my card. Hi, Kathy. Kathy's another one of my great friends, and she's going to join me in September. So is Diana. We're going to have so much fun. Um, thank you very much for your compliment. Um, so we're going to be using this one and the Merry Christmas. I call this one the bigger fat one. And we're going to be using this one. The May... May the beauty of the season bring you joy and warm memories to cherish throughout the year. So those are the three we're going to use this time. Like I said, I'm not going to go ahead this time. I won't put them all together, but I will go ahead and stamp them all at once so that that is done. But I'm going to just make one of the cards so that you can see how to put it together. Because I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me put 12 cards together. Okay, so I'll put these back in my envelope and I only need one of these I'll put these back in okay oops slide it in there okay so let's go ahead with our stamping first now we are going to use on our card we're going to be doing stamping on our card base twice uh, before I fold that, we're going to keep them flat before I fold that. So what, oh, you know what? I need to stamp on these. I forgot I was going to do all my stamping at once. Okay, so what you want to do is, on the inside of your card, you're going to have the mountain. So like this is the mountain. You're going to have that on the inside of your card. The valley is on the outside of the card. That means I have already, um, what you call, um, stretch the fibers of the card for you. So let me move this over to the side so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna do the white first. So I want the part with the valley on the outside. Again, I'm going to lay them like this and make sure they're straight. Line them up. Like that. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna start with the cherry cobbler. And we're going to do Merry Christmas. Now I'm doing it towards the corner here. And I wanna move it over. Now, also, I'm gonna show you another trick too. If you're not positive you have it far enough over, take your red piece of paper and lay it right here. And then you can see where you're going to need to be because that piece is going to go right there. So that way you can make sure you're over far enough. Ah, I just got it all wet. Okay. Hmm. This is an opportunity, but I'm not sure how I want to fix this. Because we're doing 12 cards, I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece. But I'm going to fix this, and I will post it on the Facebook page how I fix this and what I did to do. I call these embellishment opportunities or to do something different on here. But I'm going to set it off to the side, and I will do fix that, and I will put it on um, my Facebook page so that you guys can see how I fixed it. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab another piece of paper. Let's just move this one. Well, this one we can take out. We did that one. So let's put these two here. I can't believe I made a mess. And I even told you guys, make sure to check your stamps. And I did not, did I? So let's clean it off. And the red ink makes a mess. So don't be surprised if you get red on your fingers when you use the red ink. Okay, let's try this again. And I'm going to check. Oh, much better on this one. And that also means I pressed too hard when I stamped it. One, two, three, straight up. Much better. Let's try that again. There we go. One, two, three, straight up. So, like I said, I will fix that one and show you what I did to it. 
my first thought is to um, which caught to put like a piece of paper here going maybe I don't know we'll see what I can come up with but I'll do something all right so now we're going to flip our pieces oh here's the other one I'm like I know I did three so now we're gonna flip them and we're going to stamp the inside with our sentiment so I'm just putting them together here so they're lined up they're on top of each other and I'm using lines on my paint on my mat so like I have my score line lined up with this line so you use whatever you want your grid paper I did not grab a piece of grid paper before I got started um, we've been a little busy in our house today moving furniture and things I'm changing my craft room around again which I always do I love to change things around but we are trying to clean up some rooms because our beautiful daughter Erica is moving back in with us we are so excited to have her with us so we are going to be using the red um, cherry cobbler I mean on there and clean that off and like I said you're gonna see red and green all over my fingers when I'm done with this so we are done with that part now get out your circles and your envelopes so we're gonna do our circles and we're gonna get out our envelopes because we're gonna stamp the same tree on both now I'm also gonna show you something else too while we're at it but we're gonna use this green it's the medium one medium fat one um, I'm reading the comments <laughs> so Yes, I could use a sand eraser with that, but I did learn with the red and for how much red I have on it, that's kind of hard. So I'm going to try to come up with an uh, impromptu way to do it, I guess. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. This you're just centering on here, and it doesn't matter. Just make sure it's centered because it's a circle, so you don't have to line up anything again. Twist, twist, twist. I forget how wet new ink pads are okay there we go and clean and that off oh no I'm not gonna clean it off because I'm gonna use it on my envelope but so I'm gonna use put it on my envelope I'm gonna move this a little bit because I used these for classes last night and that one's Getting a little lighter in that area so I'm going to use my upside down there we go so we're going to go ahead and put three of these on there we go clean that off I'm making a hot mess here okay now this is what I want to show you some of the ladies put a little tree on here too so they took the little tree and they stamped it like kind of over here like this and they came in and stamped it again like that so it's got three trees isn't that cute you can do a lot with these little trees I love these little trees so I'm gonna come over a little bit and stamp it and stamp off again now one thing when you do your stamping off make sure when you stamp the first one you're not stamping it super hard I'm just lightly stamping I'm stamping it but I'm like not really pushing because you want enough ink to stamp there see isn't it cute with the three I love it you know what okay I'm changing it I'm changing mine because I think this this tree is so cute I'm gonna add it to the inside of my cards how cute is that oh cute 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 voila love it okay so let's clean off this little guy and close our ink pad so we don't get ink everywhere okay so now we can go ahead and fold these make sure my hands are clean before I touch white paper again we're going to put our finger here come down and then take our bone folder and it's lined up 
So do that on all three of these. And one more. Okay, these two I'm gonna set off to the side. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of my stamped images and I'm taking one of my uh, cherry cobbler circles. Put these off to the side. We're done with these. Okay, so you guys can see the card. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take my white and I'm going to adhere it to my cherry cobbler circle. I use the layering circle dies for these. And then we're gonna put the designer series paper. This again is from the um, Christmas Tidings um, designer series paper in the annual catalog. And we're gonna line this up, which, oh, I might be going down too far. Now, no matter how hard I try to get these exact, sometimes you get a little bit up here on the top or bottom that's a little hangover, overhang, hangover. Huh? Have I had one of those in years? Overhang. Um, so we're going to just trim that up. Like I said, this is really tiny, but I just like them trimmed. So I'm going to trim that off. Okay, then we're going to put this one on the left-hand side of your paper. Oops, tape on me. And I'm lining it up with all the edges. That looks good, and press it down. So then we're gonna take this and we're gonna use dimensionals again. Now, as you can see, I have used up all of my dimensionals, but don't waste these. Use these, I cut them up with my scissors that are my, I call my glue scissors, and I cut them up and I use all of those. And we'll put it right here. And then you're going to take your gold gilded gems and you're going to put three of them on here again. We're going to put one in the center here and then we're going to put one here and one here. And there you go. And there's that card. Yay! So let me clean up and there's this and let's get this in back into our bag. So I have everything together to finish them later. Whoops. I'm looking at comments. <laughs> okay. Now, Kathy had mentioned, I wanted to show you this. Kathy had mentioned the... Um, sand eraser. So I want to show you what a sand eraser is. This is what a sand eraser is. And what you can do is on here, now you're going to want to work light. You want to lightly do this and just keep working on it and see how it's, I'm not sure if you guys can see how it's lightening, lightening up. Let me go ahead and but see how I'm slowly doing it and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. You just want to um, take your time doing it and you can get it all off. But I'm just gonna show you how I lightened it because you guys don't need to sit here. But see how much lighter that one is than this? And it will take it off. But um, which I do wanna show you though the other way, another way to fix it if you have it, if you don't have the sand eraser. So I will make that and show it to you and get it on there. Um, I won't be today, but tomorrow I will. Oh, that goes with that. Okay. So our next one, we are going to be making this beautiful card. And, whoops, grabbed the wrong, put that one for last, right? Yes, this is the one I want. I have my little cheat sheet above me for sizes. Um, now this one is from our, the paper is from the designer series paper that is in our celebration catalog. 
and it is called, I always forget the name of this, Peaceful Prince. And this also coordinates with Peaceful Deer that's in the annual catalogs. Um, Donna, I will text you later. I'll message you later. Um, she was asking if I have directions for these. I will message her later for that. But here is this beautiful paper, and you can get this free when you spend $50 or order $50 of product before tax and shipping. But isn't this just beautiful paper? I love this paper. And, pretty, and I really like this. This is Sahara Sand, which we haven't used a lot lately, so I was excited to see that color. So that is where this paper came from, and I wanted to show you guys, give you a little sneak peek of some designer series paper. So on this card, let's go ahead and grab our stuff. And you know what, I don't think, I did not give you measurements for this card. Um, on this card, I'll quick go through it. It is, the circles are three and a quarter by three and a quarter. The designer series paper is two by four and a quarter. The, um, this cherry piece of cherry cobbler is two and an eighth by four and a quarter. And then our white is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. So on this one, we're going to get this kit out. This is a fun one. We're going to be doing Merry Christmas. And it looks like even in the light here, it looks green, but I did use black on this because of the black in the paper. So we're just using Merry Christmas and we're going to use our... Um, sentiment again on the inside but it opens up like that how fun is that so we're gonna do our stamping first and there is an order in which you need to put this card together and I will show you that now the sizes are different on this one your red is five and a half by seven and you're gonna score it at two and three-fourths your um, white is gonna be four by five and a quarter your black is is two and a half by five and a quarter. Your designer series paper is going to be two and a quarter by five. Your red, your little piece of red, is going to be three by three and three fourths, and you're going to score it at one half inch. This piece of black is going, whoops, I don't have the card up here. Sorry. There we go. This piece of black is going to be two and a quarter by three and a half. If I can get one out. And then your white is going to be at two by three and a quarter. So you're going to need for stamping, we're going to need our whites. So that's the ones we're going to need first. Let's move this off to the side here. Okay, so let's get our whites out. So on the inside, we're going to do this one. Now this one you're going to stamp this way. And we're going to stamp our sentiment, like I said, using the black. Now, a lot of times with my black, I don't know why, but I like to put my stamp set down, my stamp down and go like this and put my ink on. I'm not sure the reason why I do that, but I do. And we're just going to stick that right in the middle. There we go. We're going to do that again. And I'm just going to pick up my ink. Put it down. Oh, goodness. Technical difficulties. <gasps> okay. And stamp that one. Put it off to the side. Get my ink out again. And stamp it. There we go. So put those on the side. So we're done with that. So go ahead and wipe that off again. So now we're going to come in with our Merry Christmas and it's gonna be on our little ones. Now I'm going to line these up so I can do it again like I did before. Let's close it so you can see. Okay, so we're gonna do our black. Oops, stuck to it. Right. 
Now on this one on my envelope, I'm going to actually put a black tree. Now some people last night did a red tree. Um, they used the cherry cobbler, but this is actually real red. It is not cherry cobbler. So I'm going to use the black and see what it looks like. And you know what, let me grab the chair, the real red and we'll try one in that too and we'll see how it works. So we're gonna get our envelopes. And you could do any tree you wanted to. If you had a snowflake, that would be really pretty on here. Um, I'm trying to think what snowflake could we use? I don't think there what was in there. Well, there was just trees on that one. And this on this stamp set. But if you had a snowflake, you could easily put a snowflake in the corner, but let's see what a tree looks like. Let's do a little tree. I'm gonna do a small tree. Let's see what that looks like in the corner. Oh, that's cute. I do like that. So that's what I'm gonna put on mine. I'm gonna put the little black tree. And one more. Oh, I wanted to see what it looked like with the red tree. Let me, whoops, let me quick clean this off and I will see what it looks like with the red tree. Make sure there's no black ink on there. Okay, here's the red tree. Oh, that's cute too. And there's one with the red tree. So you can see both the black and the red, how they look. And like I said, if you have a snowflake stamp set, you could easily do that. Okay, put the real right back. Alrighty, so now you can put this and we got, okay, now you can put your little piece on your black. So go ahead and put one of your pieces on your black. Mm, tape, here we go. And center it. Okay, and then put your big piece of designer series paper on your black. And you could use either side if you wanted to do the check. You could do the check or you could do snowflakes, whatever one. It's your card, be creative, do whatever you want. I do want to show you something that one lady made a boo-boo and we fixed it. And I'll show you what we did. It turned out really cute. Um, now, on our red, so this, you can go ahead, actually grab this out and we will burnish that. And you can go ahead and put your um, black and designer series paper. You can put this piece on this right here. Oops, sticky. But I need to lay it flat like this so I can see the edges better. Okay, so you could do that. Alrighty, now for this, we don't want to put our white in yet. We want to burnish this piece right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this piece right here. But see how it's tucked under there? So what you're going to do is you're going to put adhesive on this side. So see how it folds in like this? This is where you're going to put your adhesive. Now, you can use tear and tape if you want. Or another one real good is the... Um, Stamp and Seal Plus, and that's what I'm gonna use on this one, and just run it down here. Okay, so then you're gonna take your red piece of paper, and you're gonna take that edge, it's folded under, and you're gonna line it up with this right here, and you're gonna do it in the center. I should've got grid paper out for this. Hold on, let me grab a little piece of grid paper for that. Because I am a person that needs things lined up, now I'm using a little piece of grid paper from our Stamparatus. And I love this one. I'm just working on a small project and I don't need a big piece of paper out. So I'm gonna put my card 
on here, we're gonna go up here, because there's the one inch. Okay, five and a half. So I want this in the center. So my center is gonna be two and three fourths, which is right here. So I want to, no, right? No, this is five and a half. Yeah, two and three, two and seven eighths actually, or three. Well, anyways, it goes in the center here. I'm trying to line it up. Okay, five and a half. There we go, right there. So my center is gonna be three seven eighths and four and five eighths is the sides you want. There we go. So now that's in the center. So then you're gonna take your white piece that you had. Now remember, this is going to come down like this. So we're gonna put our white piece like this. So that's gonna go like this. So you wanna put your white piece in. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now we have it like this. Now you're gonna take this piece and you're gonna put it on the top here. And so what we're gonna do now is take a piece of your ribbon and you're gonna tie it in a bow. And I'm using a bow maker and you go right over left, go under, and then you're gonna tie a knot and you tie it tight like this. And then I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna bring my pieces down, my tails down like this. And then I have my bow. There we go. And you just play with it and make it the way you want it. Now, what I wanna show you is my friend made a mistake on her, how was it she did it? Because how did we end up doing that? I'm trying to think how we did that. We ended up flipping it. Is that right? Because we made it a stand. Oh my gosh, now I can't remember how we did that. Oh, I know, she taped this piece to here. So her little red piece was like on this side. So we, what we did was we took it and we made it a stand. So like it folded this way, this piece came down and we put the bow right here. So it made like a little stand. It was really cute how we did it, how we fixed it. But on this one, we're going to put our bow right here. So use a glue dot and they are on here somewhere. Right here. Oops, tail went up again. Okay. It's stuck to me. Oh, I need to put another one on there because I did not get it where I wanted it. There we go. Okay, so put it in the kind of in the center is where I put it. There, that looks good. And there we go. And then you can trim the tails. Oops. And you can make them as long as you want. That's totally up to you. It's your card. There we go. And there you have this card. Now you guys got red rhinestones in your kit. So what I did with those was I put them on my snowflakes. So you can put them on whatever snowflake you want. Like I will put one here and then whoops, come back here. And then over here looks good. And let's see, we got one more. That one's gonna be close to that. So let's find I'm gonna put one here. I'm actually gonna move this one. I'm gonna put this one, come on. I'm gonna put it up here. There we go. There, I like that. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it over here. There we go. So, and the way I did this card, you could actually put five the way the snowflakes are, which I probably would, like, okay, I can go ahead and use these extras. But I would probably put five and I'd probably put one down here, like over here. And remember, you want to do odds. So I would put one like up here. There we go. So I would put five on that one. 
Okay, so there we have that card done. So let me get this stuff back in the bag. Pick all my stuff up. Now our next one is a fun one to make. And this one, um, I did all the things for you if you got your kit, but I'll explain what I did. That in there, my ribbons, keep everything together. Okay, that can go over here. Okay, so our next one. Oh, that envelope goes with this. Okay, so here is the next card we're going to be making. This is probably one of my favorite that we are making today. Um, I just need a quick take a drink. Okay. So this one is a fun one. I used a couple different pro products on this one. This one is going to be the... Um, crumb cake is made with the bark and I had it going across this way so you can see it going across and then to cut my snow everyone was given well the ones that were here were given um, a strip of oh, three fourths by one and a, four and a quarter inch piece of paper and then they took from the inspired canopy dies which coordinates with inspired thoughts dies i took it and i cut them like this to give me my snow and that's how i came up with my snow bank so and these are the dies from this stamp set love it haven't had a chance to play with it yet but i do like this um one thing i did oops, forgot to grab is i put wink Estella on my whoops paper on my snow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead before we even get started and do my wink of stella because the wink of stella takes a little bit longer to dry so we'll go ahead and get that on our snow i just covered it up i'll just do one so oops and i think this one might be dry let me grab another one There we go, this one's working better. There we go. So I just did one of them. But to go ahead and do your Wink Estella and set those off to the side to dry. We're gonna take one of our um, cherry cobbler, and it's at five and a half by eight and a half. Score it at four and a quarter. Your cherry, your crumb cake is four by no four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then your red, your cherry cobbler, is three and. Okay, that looks. I can't read my writing. Isn't that awful? So we're gonna measure it. Your cherry cobbler is. Four and a half by three and a quarter. Then that would make your white is going to be three by four and a quarter. No, it's not because I changed it. That's right. It's going to be three by four and a quarter. That's right. Okay, so yours is going to look a little different than mine because I messed up when I started cutting these. So you're going to have a bigger area around here so i will um you'll see when i make this card the difference in the so you're going to have instead of like this you're going to have it like this and needless to say after i cut i think i prepped for over 200 cards i was not cutting all these at different so we're just going to have bigger borders than what's on that card and then your white for the inside is going to be four by five and a quarter that's why it wasn't making sense with my measurements up here. And then we have this beautiful, um, this is the evergreen ribbon, ever, evening evergreen ribbon that is in the annual catalog. 
and I cut that at seven inches. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do our stamping first. So on the inside, I, this time I put Merry Christmas and I use the tree, this tree because we're gonna use this tree, our little tree, and our Merry Christmas, and the sentiment. So we got lots of stamping to do on this one. So let's start with our Merry Christmas first and we're gonna do that in Cherry Cobbler. Okay, um, Merry Christmas. And I'm going a little bit higher than the middle of my card because I'm going to want to put that tree in there. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher than I would not directly in the center. Perfect, and then go ahead and clean that off. And since we're re using the real red, uh, we're gonna stick with the real red, so we're gonna switch a little bit. Get your little pieces of white out, and we're gonna do the front, where we're gonna do our red here. We're gonna use our sentiment. And we're gonna go near the top. It doesn't have to be, like it's not, your trees are going to, um, you're gonna adjust your trees to your sentiment. So put your sentiment where you want it, and then you can adjust your trees around it. And you can even switch it if you rather put the Merry Christmas on the front. Um, I just wanted it a little bit smaller on the front. I didn't want a real long one on my front. But you can do whatever you want. It's your card. Let your creativity flow. I knew one lady put hers directly in the middle. Another one had hers more to the right or left, I mean. Okay, so then we're done with the red. So you can go ahead and close that up. We're finished with that for the day and wipe this off. Not too bad, not too much red on my fingers. Yay! That's a good day. Okay, so now we're gonna get our green out. While we have this out, we're gonna go ahead and use it now. What I want you to do is take the piece of white that you had, and there's your snow. So you're gonna look at that and kind of decide, where do I wanna put my trees? Where don't I wanna put my trees? Because you want them to kind of cover up. So I'm just kind of gauging where I want my trees. So I'm gonna take my big one first. That's the first one I wanna stamp. Okay, so I know my hill is right here. So I know I'm gonna want it a little bit lower than that. So I'm gonna put it like right here and it's gonna go right along my um, sentiment. And this ink pad is really dry in the center. So let me grab my other one. I have two of these. Let me grab the other one because I think a lot of it was used last night and I did not re-ink them. Let me try this one. Okay, so let me get my other one. And I'm doing all my big stamping first. My big tree. And then I'll come back with my little tree. So again, on this one, I know I kind of want it there. I'm going to move this and stamp. Oh, that one is like that too. Hmm. Can you see how mine's getting light in the center? I'm, you know why? I didn't twist. Yep, that's what I didn't do to my ink. Okay, well we'll fix that, won't we? All right, we're gonna put this back on here again. See where I want it. And I'm gonna twist this time. Tap, 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 twist, 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 tap, tap, tap. There we go, much better, but I got it all over my block. Oh my goodness. What a hot mess I am right now. Okay, let's get this off so it doesn't go on my card. So you just take a wipe and you take, get your edges. 
was trying to get the center and I pushed too hard. There we go. Okay. Now I've been playing with this, so I'm going to huff on it. And then I'm going to stamp. There. Oh, still it's light. Ah, okay. We're going to have white trees on mine this time. Now, I want to use those on my envelope. So I'm going to get those out again. Okay, we can put our little piece away for a minute. Get our envelopes out. And I'm going to stamp a big one right here. It's still coming out light. You know, you know what? Let's do it this. I want to try something. Wonder, I'm putting it on here upside down and see if that makes a difference. Because I'm thinking it's my, it is, it's my ink pad. Okay, so the center is real dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp. I'm inking it up like this because my center is real dry. So I want to get the outside. I'm going to flip it and I'm going to ink it again. So that way I'm getting both sides wet until I get a chance to re-ink my ink pad. They are much better. Okay, so go ahead and clean your big one because we're done with the big one for right now. So if that happens to you where you see the section of your ink pad is too dry, it needs more ink, go around your edges is usually where you um, um, go do the, um, where the ink gathers, because most people stamp right in the middle. So just switch your stamp around and get the ink. Um, Diana, I use the um, Bark Embossing Folder. Yours is an emboss? Oh, sugar. I did the bark, but if you know what, if you come back over, you can use the bark because this is in the new catalog. You might not have that, but if you want to step on over, I can quick emboss those for you. That was my mistake. I gave you one that was not embossed because you were going to do the in-person class and decided to do the online, so that's why it's not embossed. I'm sorry. So bring it on over, and I will emboss that for you. Um, what's nice is Diane and I live right by each other, so that works wonders. Um, okay, so this is going to be, we're going to get our white again because we're going to now do the green, the little trees. So what I did with that, oh, I put my ink pad away. So what I did with that is, you can see that one's lighter because you're going to stamp this one, then you're going to stamp that one. So again, I'm just kind of guessing where it's at. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And I'm watching your my wording too because I don't want this in the wordy. So I'm gonna stamp it here, then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna stamp it here. See how I did that? I'm gonna do that on the same side here. And I'm gonna do here. You know what, I wanna turn this again, my ink. Okay, we're gonna do it here. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna do a lighter one here. And then see when I go to put my snow on it, See how nice that looks with my snow now? There. Oops, there you go. That's where my snow will go. Cool, huh? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the next two so you can see again what I did. Okay, so I'm going to ink it. I'm going to come down. And then I'm going to come back up here and stamp it again. And I'm going to do it again. Mm, let's go up here and then down here. And see how I, because I had stamped off here, so this part right here is a little bit darker because when I stamped this one, I was off a little bit. It doesn't matter because your snow is going to cover it up. So that won't matter. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, I'm gonna stamp here, stamp up. Let's bring this one down. Okay. Okay, what about right there? I'm going to bring this one down a little bit. Now, if you notice on my ink pad, on my cards, there's five trees. Because again, you want to make sure you're doing everything in odds. It's more pleasing to the eye. It's actually, it is actually a designer trick. 
that you do everything in odds. So like on our envelopes, we did one tree. Now, if I was gonna do the little ones on my envelope again, I would do three trees. So you wanna make sure that um, you do everything in odds. So now let's go to get our um, card put together. So we're gonna fold it in half again with the mountain in the inside, valley on the outside. Okay, now before you put your crumb cake on, you're gonna take the crumb cake and you're going to adhere the um, ribbon. Now I'm going to put adhesive, um, I want this one. I'm gonna put it here, oops. I'm gonna put it here and here. Put a little bit more on this side. Okay, so then I'm going to take it and I did not, I tried to get it in the center the best I could. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, cause it's four inches, so I know my center's two. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it on here at two, so the center of my ribbon is at two inches. And then I'm gonna bring it around I'm gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna flip my paper. Now this is for OCD people like me. And I'm gonna line it back up and I'm gonna make sure that ribbon is in between the twos. So see my ribbon, the two is halfway in my ribbon and then my ribbon is straight across, but it needs to be a little tighter. So we'll take this one off, make it a little tighter. There we go, okay. Oh, and it's not centered because I moved it. Oh, Joyce. Hey, let's pull it back up and line her up. Okay, I'm going to put more adhesive because I moved it. I want it tight. There we go. Just, there we go. And there. Okay, now it's centered. All righty. Now, when you look at this, see how it comes up a little bit? If you want to help secure it, you don't have to because you're going to be putting things on top of it. But if you wanted to, take a glue dot and just stick it in the middle and that will help hold it down. If you want to do that, you do not have to. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take one of your um, stamped images for the front and put it on to... You know what, before we do that, let's put this on because this has tape already on it. Let's put this here, this one on to the front. Now, like I said, yours are going to be a little bit, you're gonna see more of the cherry cobbler on yours because I didn't realize that the, I cut the wrong size until after I had all of them prepped. And no offense, I was not going to go back and recut all of these again. So we're gonna, these are just gonna have a little bit bigger red. Now, if you want the smaller red on this, well, I guess you wouldn't be able to do that because you wouldn't have it small all the way around. Okay. And then this is going to be put on with dimensionals because I have ribbon below it. And it is, um, uh, the ribbon is, Thicker, so you're gonna to wanna to pop this when you go over ribbon. Now I'll show you what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just cut these up. I'm just going through and all I do is this. I go through and I cut each one up. And I go through and I do my whole sheet at one time. That's why then they're cut up. I can just grab it and I can use them and I'm done. I don't have to cut every time. So then I just grab them and I put them on here. And so you use every piece of these. Don't waste them. Um, put my... And take one of these here. And I'm going to put one in the middle because I don't like the middle to sag. So I'm gonna stick one right here. There we go. Take those off. Hi, Pam, thank 
thank you for joining. Hi, Kay. I'm glad you could join us and thank you for sharing. I really appreciate that. Okay, so now we're going to put these on here and we're going to center it over it. And you know what? I didn't put my white on, so we will put our snow on after we put this on. Usually I would put my snow on before I put it up here, but we kind of forgot about it. So I'm going to go ahead and put adhesive on my snow. And we're just going to put it on the bottom here and line it up with your white. This is easy to add. Oops. Come on. There we go. And there's your snow. Oops, I need to move a little bit. Okay. Now you have your gold gilded gems, and I have mine around here somewhere. There they are. You have three for each of your cards. And I put one down here in the corner. Now it's a little bit less room because of how I cut your paper, but you can still put it here. You can even put it on the white if you want to. It is totally up to you where you want to put them, but that is where I had put those on this card. So that's the way they look a little bit different. Um, like I said, all of yours in your kit are going to look like this. Then you're going to take one of your inside pieces and you're going to, you know what, did I stamp a tree on there? I did. Let's put a tree, I forgot to put our tree on our inside. Let's get those back out and our tree back out. We used this tree and our evening evergreen. Okay, so I'm going to stamp on one side and I'm going to come stamp on the other side and I think that will be better. I didn't think to check them. Oh, it is better, much better. Um, I didn't think to check these after class last night, and I should have before class this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. There we go. One more. And voila. There. So now we got the tree on the inside. This is fun. such a fun set. You can do a lot of things with this. One thing I thought, too, these trees would be pretty... We like to go to Gatlinburg, so when I scrapbook my Gatlinburg pay, uh, pages, those will look really cute on there too. So we're gonna go ahead and take one of our inside pieces and we're gonna put adhesive. Whoops. And we're gonna put it on the inside of our card, whoops. There we go. And there's that card. Yay! And you just made your a set of Christmas cards. So you are ahead of the game because now you have 12 cards left. And if you joined me, oh, you just got back from Pigeon Forge. Oh my goodness, I love Pigeon Forge. And I love going to Dixie Stampy because their food is so good but it's so much fun. Oh, thank you so much for your kind compliments. Kay, I appreciate that. So here are the cards we made today. Kind of put that one on top to hold this little guy down a little bit. Here we go. We're going to put him down here. There. And then we got this little guy here. There. Can you guys see all of those? Yes, you can. Okay, so there's our cards for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And like I said, if you would like a kit for these, just go to stampandscrapper.com and send me an email. And, or you can message me on Facebook too through my Stamp and Scrapper page and I'd be happy to get one for you. I can send you a PayPal invoice for one. And um, the cost, if anyone's interested, it's $30 to get this kit plus shipping. Um, the cherry cobbler one is your favorite. Which cherry cobbler? There's these three use cherry cobbler. Is it the left, the middle, or the right? Which one's your favorite, Pam? Um, and you can get a kit for this if you would like to. Now I will be doing the my Christmas card class again for September. You can look at my blog, um, stampandscrapper.com to get ideas and uh, just see what I'm going to use for next month. It will be the second Saturday for the online class, the second Friday because of Memorial Day, I mean Labor Day weekend. So I will be doing it the second weekend and then I'll be doing it in October and November too. 
Also, if you just joined us new, um, don't forget to check out my holiday extravaganza that I'm also going to be offering online. And um, it cars love it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Donna. Um, then you can also um, um, check out the holiday extravaganza. I would love for you to join us. It's a whole day on October 9th of scrapbook, I mean stamping. We'll be making three cards, one 3D project for with four different stamp sets and it will be throughout the day. I will do four different Facebook Lives sharing that and we will have a page just special for that um, event. It won't be on my Stampin' Scrapper page. It will be just for the people that register. So I hope you can join us. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you guys. Have a great Saturday. Sending love and hugs to all of you. And there you go. Bye-bye.